Welcome everyone for another episode of Cooking in the Kitchen with Danny. And today we're going to tackle pie crusts because I've heard that a lot of you think that making a pie crust is somehow magical or mystical or too difficult to even contemplate doing. And I want to dispel that myth today and show you that anybody can make a pie crust. It's really, it's as easy as pie. So before we jump in, I'm just going to tell you there's just a few little ingredients that you're going to need in your kitchen. You're going to need all-purpose flour. You're going to need some sugar, some salt, some butter, some Crisco or lard, some shortening. Um, you're going to need, um, I use a, a Cuisinart food processor. You don't have to have one of those, but it sure makes things easier. Um, but that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you today because it's like pie season and summer without pie is like life in two dimensions, right? Like pie is just so wonderful. It's like, mm, it's that thing that everybody loves a piece of pie. I particularly love fruit pies, but I love so many pies and we're going to make some of them this summer. We're going to start with a blackberry pie, which I'm gonna to show to you right after um, I teach you how to make pie crust, okay? Okay, let's get going. Um, we're going to start with, um, as I said, a few simple ingredients. We've got flour, and we're gonna start by measuring it in a bowl. Um, I, as I've taught you in my other episodes of Cooking in the Kitchen with Danny. I typically use the scoop and, and um, sweep method for measuring flour, but it turns out I like things simple. So I actually measure mine um, on a scale now because it's just because it's just so much easier. Um, so I have a little simple, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring my camera down so you can watch what I'm doing. I have my kitchen scale right here. Um, I'm gonna turn it on, it's gonna go to zero. I'm going to put my bowl in there and then hit the button one more time and it goes right back to zero. So now I'm only going to be measuring what I put in there. Per the recipe, 12 and a half ounces of flour. So I can just scoop it and dump and oh, I don't know if you can see those numbers very well. I've got 2.5 ounces, 5.3, 7.8. I'm looking for 12.5 is the number of ounces of flour in this pie crust. 12.4, 12.5. There it is. Okay. So we're going to also add, and all these ingredients are written down for you. We're going to take this, first of all, we're going to take this flour, which is now measured. It's perfectly measured. We're going to take the scale out of the way. And we're going to switch over to the food processor. Let me bring it over where you can see it now. So I have just a regular... KitchenAid food processor. I don't know if it's going to work right here. Anyways, let's see. Okay, how about right here? Okay, so we're going to take half of this flour, essentially half of the flour, and put it in the bowl of, of the um, food processor. And, you know, don't be too fussy about exactness. I don't really think it matters right now. Um, we're going to take one teaspoon of table salt and add that. We're going to add two tablespoons of sugar. I've made this pie crust so many times. I've been making pie crust since I was 12 years old and I have made a lot of different versions of pie crust. And this by far is my absolute favorite version. It works out perfectly every time. Okay, so we're gonna take that and we're just gonna Give it a couple quick pulses till it's mixed together nice, nice and nice. It's just mixed together. Then we're going to take, we need, let's see, a, a stick and a half of butter, which is cut into quarter inch pieces. 
I keep my butter in the freezer, quite honestly, so I just take it out frozen, and I'm gonna show you how to cut it into quarter inch pieces. Um, it's really easy peasy. I'm gonna take this off because I'm gonna put it in there on top of there. So I take my butter, I cut it once lengthwise like that. Make sure you keep your hand on top of the blade. You don't wanna cut any fingers off. Um, okay, so just slide it off of there. Then you're gonna cut it again lengthwise, each piece. So you'll end up with four long skinny pieces. Okay, and then I'm just gonna cut those into quarter inch pieces. I'm gonna take that butter and I'm going to scatter it over the top of the flour. Okay, so that's the first cube of butter. These are the quarter inch pieces, or, you know, don't get too fussy. That's the thing, you just think you have to be perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Just try it. You're gonna really love this. I'm gonna tell you right off, I know a lot of you are gonna have like um, kind of a serious fat freak out about this pie crust. Let me tell you, if you've lived through the 80s and the 90s where we made, um, were fat free and low fat, um, were all the rage, this is gonna give you a little bit of heart failure. How much fat goes into this pie crust? I know over the years I tried to make low fat pie crust. It's not worth it, you guys. Like totally, if you're gonna eat pie, eat the best dang pie you can possibly put in your mouth. Like don't make a crappy pie just so you can avoid fat. Because this is this fat, I tell you, is what's gonna make um, the pie crust literally so easy to work with. But the other thing is it's gonna make it, it's gonna make it have a beautiful um, layery crustiness. Um, that's just gonna melt in your mouth. And listen, you're probably not gonna eat the whole pie, so it's not like you're gonna eat a scoop and a half of butter. And if that wasn't enough fat, we're gonna add even more. This calls for a half a cup of chilled shortening. I use Crisco today, which I put in this half cup measuring cup, and I put it in the freezer a couple hours ago to chill it. I just cut it into four pieces. I'm gonna take those pieces and I'm gonna just lay them in the top of the processor. Like that. Perfect. A little bit more. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna take the processor, close it, get my hands off. I don't like butter all over my hands. And we're gonna give it about eight or 10 pulses until it starts to come together in a clump. Are you counting? I'm not, but I want you to see what it looks like inside. So it's starting to come together in a um, Let's see, let me tip you over here a little bit. Can you see that inside? Okay, do you see though it's kind of clumped together? And I'm gonna just kind of put that down just like that. So it kind of scraped it down from the sides. Now we're going to put in the remaining amount of flour. We're gonna put that right in here. Just scatter it over the top. Just like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're in the kitchen. You do what you want. Okay, so there we go. We put that on there. We're gonna just give it a couple of little pulses just to kind of incorporate that all together. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna take this and put this from the food processor now, and we're going to dump it into the just um, a large mixing bowl is all you really need. Okay, so we have the large mixing bowl. Just dump that all out. Here we go. We're all done with the process now. Get that out of the way. 
and the rest of this easy peasy. Okay, let's just set this out of the way. Ooh, the other thing we need, ice cold vodka. The kitchen is complete without ice cold vodka in the refrigerator. And my book, if you like pies, you better have a vodka, a pie vodka in the fridge. Okay, so now we've got this uh, just crumbled together mixture of fats, uh, flour, salt, and sugar. And we're gonna sprinkle over it four tablespoons of vodka. And I'll tell you, don't worry about, you know, alcohol being in your pie. The, the secret with the vodka is that um, it evaporates during the cooking, which is what helps make a lot of the really beautiful layers of the pie. Traditionally, you would make them all with ice water, but I use half vodka, and that just makes a, an amazing pie crust. Okay, so here we go. Two, three, four. And this is just ice water. A couple ice cubes in a thing. And then you bring your dough together. You just gently bring it together with your spatula to you kind of get into a lump in the middle. Yeah, the, the least amount of um, working you can do with pie crust, the better, because you don't want to develop the gluten by doing too much mixing. So then I just get my hand in there um, and kind of scoop it all together into a mat. Lifting and folding, bringing it all in to a single piece. If you need a little bit more moisture on there to bring it together, add it now, because you don't want a dry pie dough. Um, you want it to be nice and supple, like um, really pliable clay. I'm gonna add just a teeny, teeny bit more I'm gonna use my um, teaspoon because you don't want to add too much or you get gummy pie dough. Just a couple sprinkles, just enough to make it into a beautiful piece of clay. Okay, so then I just shape it together into roughly a flat shape, a round shape that's easy to judge what's half of it. I cut it in half. And the next part is just the pie dough resting in the refrigerator. So now I have two pieces. Um, shape them into a ball. You can feel just that nice, supple, um, flexible texture. That's all that fat. And believe me, you, you definitely want the fat. Just trust me on this one. So it's gonna make you a little squeamish at first. I get it. But this is so much better than anything you're going to buy at the grocery store. So then I just take my um, saran wrap and I lay it down. I lay my ball of dough in there, kind of flatten it out and make it into a round shape, maybe four or five inches across. Tuck that under there nice and tight. Second piece for the other half. One is going to be your bottom crust and one is going to be your top crust. And once you've gotten your ingredients together, literally, that just takes a few minutes. So, there we go. Pop that into the freezer. And there you go. A upper crust, a lower crust, and we're going to put them in the freezer for 45 minutes. Um, 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll come back and we're going to make a blackberry pie. Okay, we're back. The pie dough has been in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes now. So we're going to get ready to uh, line the pie plate. And I'm going to use just a standard 9-inch Pyrex line, um, pie plate for this pie that I'm making today. Um, they're easily available. They work fantastically. I think they're the best ones you can get for your money. So we, the, we've got the pie crust dough. I'm going to take and scoop just a little bit of flour. And I've cleaned my counter very well, washed, dried, and it's, it's clean, it's smooth, and so I just roll my pie crust right on that counter. Some of you may have tile or some other surface, and you may not want to put it right on the counter. In that case, you can buy one of those uh, pie crust rolling mats. I've just never done it. 
Okay, so I just put a little bit of uh, flour out and swirl it around with my hand. My hands are nice and clean and a little bit floured. Um, I sprinkle just a tiny bit on the top and then on the bottom, rub it in. And then you're just gonna take, and I, I have a marble rolling pin. Um, any kind of rolling pin will do. Literally in a pinch, I've, um, when visiting friends who don't have a rolling pin, oh my gosh, um, I've used a wine bottle that I soaked the label off of and then washed it really well. It's a little bit more difficult, but it's certainly doable. Okay, so then you just roll it out. I just, I always keep picking up my dough and turning it to make sure it's not sticking. Sorry, maybe give it a little bit more flour. Just roll it out nice and even. What you're looking for is about a 12 inch circle big enough to fit inside your pie pan and have just a little bit hanging over the edge. As I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not going for perfection here. We're going, you know, and can you see, I really want you to see this. I want you to see these little flecks of um, butter in the dough. Those are there on purpose. You don't want a super uniform dough. You do want to have those flex because that's what's going to um, help make the pie crust really flaky and amazing. I mean, this is going to blow your mind. And don't worry about any of that vodka flavor being in your pie. That's going to literally cook all the way out. Okay, so that's plenty big. I just double check by setting my pie plate in the middle. You can see it's not perfectly shaped. So that's not a problem. So you're just going to pick your pie crust up gently from the edges and fold it back. And then pick it up gently from the edges. Pick it up a little bit tore off. I don't mind. Okay, so I set it in the pie pan about halfway across, and then I'm just going to unfold it. And if it tears, it's not a huge big deal. Okay, we had a little bit of a tear, but not a big deal. Set it right in there. Remember, this is your first pie crust. It's not 100% perfect. You just got to make more pies. That's not a bad thing, right? Ask anybody in your family if they care if you make more pies. Okay, so I just kind of um, gently set it down in there. So lift it up and make sure it's all the way into the corners because you don't want it to pull away later. There's a little tiny hole down there and I have just a teeny bit here. I'm just gonna patch that right up. That's, I don't know if I want that folded over like that. You don't want it too thick on the edges like that. But okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. This is kind of uneven. So I'm gonna just trim this off you want it hanging down enough because you need enough to crimp your pie together once we put the filling in. But I'm just going to go around the edges and just trim it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be neat because we're going to trim it again at once the filling is all inside, okay? And right now, okay, so I've got the pie crust in the pie pan tucked into the corners and all the little edges are patched together. It's not perfect, but that's going to work just fine. And this is an extra step. It's not necessary, but um, the thing that I like to do is then cover this loosely with saran wrap. Uh, and then I'm going to just put this in to chill in the refrigerator while I make the pie filling. It's going to chill for like 30 minutes, which just helps it um, set up and be perfectly nice once we get ready to cook it. So there you go. The pie crust is cooked. I mean, sorry, I rolled it out. It's in the um, pie pan, kind of trimmed off just real roughly around the edges, covered with saran wrap, and now we're going to go stick it in the refrigerator for 30 more minutes.